Facebook Express, sponsored by Motion RC. I'm here in Innovative Designs booth. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the company? Well, I'm Lucian Miller. I'm the founder and CEO of Innovative Designs. The uh, company's been around since 2006, so we've been in the hobby industry for many, many years. We've been doing shows for almost uh, almost 40 years now, mm -hmm. so long, long time. And we're the U.S. distributor for uh, Scorpion and Cobra brand uh, power systems. We have we have our full Scorpion line of airplane and helicopter motors off on this side of the booth. And then over on this side of the booth, we've got our Cobra airplane, multi-rotor motors. Uh, some, of the, some of the new stuff we're debuting here at the show, um, our new uh, Tribunus line of speed controllers. Last year, we had the uh, 120 amp in an Opto and an SBEC for the helicopters. Mm -hmm. We also had a 14 cell 200 amp. This year, we're adding a 12 cell 130 and a whopping 14 cell 300 amp speed controller wow. uh, and these things are just amazing uh, have all the features for helicopters all your soft start all your governor modes mm -hmm. all your, your bailout all, all that stuff and the tribunus line is the first of the uh, scorpion series to add data logging so you can record all the speed controller parameters and then download them at the end of the flight and see exactly what you're doing so from what i understand you know a good amount about how these things work like yeah. just how they function can you give us an overview of how some of these function maybe if you want to talk about a specific one or just well, in general brush brushless motors uh by the name brushless means yeah. they don't have any brushes mm -hmm. And, and they, all of the, uh, the commutation that takes place that makes the motor spin happens inside the speed controllers. It's all done electronically. Yeah. And so that, essentially there's no wearing parts in these motors other than the bearings. Yeah. So where brushless motors would, you know, last a few hundred flights and then they'd kind of burn up or the brushes would be bad in them. You know, brushless motors typically run forever unless you crash them and ding up the bearings, put a new set of bearings yeah. in them, they just run and run and run. So. And the power to weight ratios of these motors is phenomenal. We have little motors like, like these, uh, the helicopter motors over here that are used in the 700 class helicopter motors. You have a little motor that weighs just under a pound that puts out seven horsepower. It's just like crazy power to weight ratios. And a, and a motor like this will, will throw a 10 pound, 700 size helicopter around, you know, 3D maneuvers like you see, just like crazy. So. It's amazing the amount of energy you can get out of out of just one of these brushless motors. They're really yeah. phenomenal. So if someone's trying to select uh -huh. you know, a motor and they don't actually have the specifications they need, how do they go about figuring that well, out? There's a couple of rules of thumb that we like to use. One of them is the watts per cubic inch method. And one cubic inch of glow power, power is roughly equivalent to 2,000 watts of power. So if you have a 40 size engine, which is 0.4 cubic inch, you take 2,000 times 0.4, that's 800 watts of power you're looking for. So that's one really simple way to, to directly go from a, a two-stroke glow engine to an electric motor. The other way is a watts per pound method with the aircraft itself. And depending on the type of plane you're flying, you know, like motor gliders, they typically only need about 50 watts per pound. You get up into trainers, you're looking for about 75 watts per pound. 100 watts per pound works really good for sport models. 150 watts per pound is what you want for, uh, you know, like pattern ships or warbird type aircraft. And then for the 3D planes where you want to be able to hover on the prop and smack them around, do all kinds of crazy stuff, about 200 watts per pound. So if you've got a six pound warbird and you're looking at 150 watts per pound, then you just need a 900 watt motor and it'll take care of it for you. So it's real easy rule of thumb and actually, on my blog, if you go to LucianMiller.com, I've written several articles that talk about what the motor numbers mean, how do you select a certain size motor for different aircrafts and stuff. So it gives you that step-by-step -step procedure that's really hard to do, you know, in two minutes of talking here in an interview. But, you know, it's, it's like a six or seven page article which guides the people step-by-step -step through the entire process and makes it easy. Yeah, and we'll definitely have that link on modelaviation.com slash expo dash express. Now, what kind of questions do you get a lot? We get a whole lot of, you know, like, I got this airplane, what motor do I need for it? Or, I've got this motor from such and such a brand, what's your equivalent motor? And another uh, asset that we have on our website at innovativedesigns.com is a motor matching chart where we've taken, like, the top 13 or 14 brands of motors and listed them in a big chart and then cross-referenced them all to all of our different motors. 
So if you've got a Great Plains kit and it's calling out a rimfire motor, but you want to use a Cobra, then you just look for that motor, go across the chart, and boom, you just know exactly which one to choose. So we're, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. You know, with, with glow engines, if you've got a 40 plane, you put a 40 motor in it, you're done. Mm -hmm. You know, with airplanes, you got 3520 and 2826 and 970 kV and 1200 kV and all this different kind of stuff. And it can be a little bit daunting for people that just don't understand electrics. And so that's why we try and do everything we possibly can at Innovative Designs to make it easier for people to select a motor for their airplane or helicopter. Yeah. Do you have any best practices or tips for anything? Well, one of the things that I always tell people when you're sizing an electric power system, Always size it so you're never using more than 80% of the recommended maximum current or recommended maximum power for the motor. By doing that, you've got a power system that even under the worst conditions, worst extremes, the hottest day, you're not going to overheat it at all. And you know, so, so many people, you know, they, they treat power ratings in airplanes like they treat speed limit signs. It's like, yeah, it's 55 amps, but I'm going to go 70 for a little while, it's not going to hurt it, right? Well, it may not hurt at that time, but but cumulatively over time, if yeah. you if you run the motors over current over and over and over again, eventually they will fail. Might not be the first flight, might not be yeah. the tenth flight, but 18 flights later, your motor burns up, and then they call us, "Hey, my motor burned up, and it's been working fine." I said, "Well, you've been slowly damaging yeah. it every flight, and you know if you back it up a little bit and, and only pull, if, if if you've got a speed controller rated for 100 amps." Yeah only run 80 through it. You got a motor rated for 80 amps. You know, limit it to 64, 65 amps and they'll last forever. All right, any final thoughts or anything you want to add? No, I mean, uh, electric power systems, you know, they've been around now real mainstream for about 10 years. And anybody that's into GLOW that wants to try electric, you know, Innovative Designs is the electric power system specialist. That's all we do. We've been doing it for, our, we're in our 12th year now. So if you have any questions about power systems or need to do any kind of conversion, you can always contact us by email you know, or by phone, and we'll take care of you. All right, perfect. And again, we'll have those links at modelaviation.com slash expo-express. Thanks for joining us, and Thank we'll you. be back live at 4 p.m. with our recap.